Good afternoon, folks. Switcher here. What the switcher have in store for you this afternoon? Well, as you can see there on the shot, uh, the uh, we completed the whole painting of the I-400. Okay, I applied uh, the gray there yesterday, and uh, as I was mentioning in uh, updates one and two or whatever, I don't even know what updates I'm at right now. Um, I had a clear demarcation on where to go. Okay, and I, I masked it, and I'm happy I masked, and we'll get into a little bit of details there, uh, where that rope guard, and you'll be able to see it a little bit more, uh, why I did what I did. I shot the, the anti-fouling paint first, which is red, okay, without masking, okay, and I just allowed it to overspray, and then I, I masked from there because I could still see my line. The rope guard that is right here, okay, is two millimeters from the red. It would have made it very difficult to really get in that area while I had... Uh, a lot of area over here above the propeller, even that was was dainty to get it in there properly. I used quarter inch, uh, to me, uh, masking tape. Uh, although that line seems straight, okay, I don't know anybody has, has played with hulls bef uh, hull, uh, before, okay. Uh, you can see it uh, for modders that he did uh, planking of ships and so on and so forth. Uh, Although the ice is a straight line, it, it, it's actually a curve. Okay, think of a banana. Not as severe as that, but that is not a straight line, okay? So quarter inch, you start from the, uh, you do uh, two ways, okay? Uh, start from the center half and then overlap your center and go forward, okay? And and just take your time and follow the, the line that is there. And it is a slight banana, for the lack of a better word. That's it's, We're trying to use metaphors here, okay? Don't mark my words on it, the one I use. But anyway, it's a, it's, it's a banana. Okay, so uh, she's all done up. We'll give her a little bit of twirly-whirly here. Uh, before we start, uh, there's that gap, okay, that I'm talking between uh, the rope guard and uh, the anti-fouling paint. And that's uh, two millimeters, okay? Uh, it was quite the job to mask around the um, the propeller dive planes and rudder and all that good stuff. And uh, that was fiddly, and you just take your time. I was using three-quarter inch masking tape, and that's how we tape the rest. Okay, once your quarter inch is down, just to block in. And uh, but this took, uh, oh, about 12 pieces of tape in there. And uh, it was quite tedious, but it did what it did, and we don't have any overspray on the fouling paint, and I'm pleased with that. Uh, I had uh, two areas here at the bow, okay, we'll see it on there, uh, where because of the torpedo tubes or whatever, there was a little bit of overspray into that top uh, discharge port, and I was able to clean that up, and uh, Bob was your uncle. Uh, in my inbox review, I said I wasn't going to use uh, leave the Tamiya on there. I decided what the heck, I wasn't about to cut it, and so on and so forth, so I did apply the decals to, uh, these are uh, self-adhesive uh, um, they're rather thick and all that good stuff. Uh, so I used the English version on one side and the Japanese version on the other side. Um, once again, I used uh, my silly putty, okay, to hold the, the ship to its stands because for the painting stages and all that. I'll be taping my base, okay, before we get into the weathering. It's just a nice way of doing it. The uh, So the upper deck is all painted, okay, and for all intents and purpose, okay, from this point on, forward okay or to uh, to the right for you viewers out there who are not used to naval terminology okay this will be gray and all this back will be the same color as the hangar deck okay and uh, the conning tower okay which was wood okay the uh, concussion for that okay it's a ratio of two to one of xf64 to xf9 and sorry it's a ratio of two to one of XF24 to XF9 and XF64. In other words, two drops of 24, one drop of XF9, and one drop of XF64 will give you uh, the brown that I used. And it does go in nicely. Uh, when we look at the grays, okay, when we look at, um, um, it, fits the, it fits the bill, okay? And uh, it is their color, and I, of course, I've got that in my notebook. So, uh, just quick and dirty, okay, because once I start getting into weathering and all that good stuff, I have a habit of just going into it, and I'll try to stop myself um, of just going through it and give periodic updates on uh, where we're going with this, 
And, um, yeah. And in the meanwhile, while all this stuff is drawing and all that good stuff, I commenced my, uh, my T55. And, uh, yeah, Mark, excellent friggin' model. That thing, it goes together like a breeze. No fit issues. Man, um, quick and dirty is what I was looking for. Okay, so uh, it's nearly complete. <laughs> uh, so quick and dirty while I'm waiting for that. And this is not uncommon for me uh, to have another model on the bench while I'm in the uh, the, the vinegar strokes, okay, on uh, the other model painting. Uh, because it's uh, 48 hours between paint jobs, okay, or steps, okay, when I'm into the, the wettering and uh, the clear coating and all that good stuff. So I got a lot of time on my hands, so I usually build building a, a model in that stages. So thanks for watching, folks. Um, Without uh, further ado, Switcher, signing off.